everyone and welcome back to Waverly Reads. This video is going to be a long one as I have 14 books that I need to wrap up. Wrapping up involves telling you what they're about and then what I thought about them. It's going to be a very long video so grab some tea, grab some snacks. Let's prepare to talk about 14 books. Bum, 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 bum. The pile is stupidly heavy and stupidly large and all the books that I read in August Minus two, I think, that I read at the end of July, but it was in the book tube and I didn't want to split that up. But we'll get into that in a few minutes. I actually don't have these in the right order, because the right order jumbles them up, as I've read a few hardbacks, a few tallbacks, and it just wasn't looking very aesthetically pleasing for me, so I had to put them in size order, and now I need to get on my Goodreads to see what order I actually did read these in. Reads is a saint, and if you're not already on it, you should be. Mine's in the description down below. So I'll promo there. First book that I read in August was technically the end of July and the beginning of the book two thon was Untamed by PC and Kristen Cast. This is the fourth book in the Marked series. I can't really tell you so much about what this one's about but I'll tell you what the first book is about. So Marked is the first book and it's about a girl named Zoe who is living her average teenage life and her biggest fear is her sociology test or her maths test or some biology test or something like just the school tests and so one day she is marked by a tracker and if you are marked that means you are becoming a fledgling vampire and you have to leave your life behind go to the house of night which is her local vampire school and train to become a vampire however it's not given your body could reject the change it could end up dead or undead either there for anyone who's actually read it, you know what I'm on about. So you could end up a dead undead person um, and your body could reject the change and then you would not be a vampire and you'd be dead. Zoe goes into the school and she deals with typical teenage drama. She's got boys that she likes, she's got best friends which she has arguments with and she's got some snobby bitches at the school that she just doesn't get along with. It's her journey being a fledgling vampire and trying to fit in in this new school where she doesn't feel like she belongs but she actually really does. This is the fourth book in that series and I did say I was never going to finish this series but I decided to give it a chance. It came out of my TBR jar, I flipped a coin and this was the one that came out. So I ended up reading this and I enjoyed it more. I don't enjoy it because of Zoe's character personally. She seems to be getting some development happening in this book specifically and I'm here for that and hopefully she'll get better and I'll be able to continue the series as there are like 10 books and I'm now on the fifth one. I hope she gets better. The second book that I read in the Booktubeathon and also right at the end of July was Cirque du Freak by Darren Shan. It's the first book in the Cirque du Freak saga and it's one of my favourite sagas and a reread for me. The Cirque du Freak saga is about this boy named Darren Shan who goes to this circus with his friend Steve. They come across this vampire who has a performing spider. Steve is obsessed with vampires and Darren is obsessed with spiders. Go figure. One day Darren goes back to the circus and steals this vampire's performing spider in for his own but this spider is highly poisonous and ends up biting his best friend Steve. Steve then goes into this coma like state and Darren has to back to the vampire begging for a cure and he has to make a arrangement? He has to make a deal with the vampire to become his assistant. Follows Darren becoming a vampire and dealing with all of that. I'm not good at this but apparently I read another vampire coming of age novel. I love this book. I always love this series. It's just one of my favourite things. I read it in school. Amazing series then. It's an amazing series now and it'll always have a place in my heart. That being said, the next book I read was The Vampire's Assistant by Darren Chan and I've already just told you what these are about so I don't really need to do that again but this is the sequel. This is book number two and again I really enjoyed this one as well. I enjoy this one for different reasons than the first one. The first one I enjoy so much because of the circus and all the wonderful aspects to it and this one because this one Darren's actually a vampire. The next book I read was The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. I flipping love this book. I am planning to do a review on this as a book versus movie thing. I have seen the movie now. I just need to write down my thoughts which I haven't done. I probably should get on that. I'll be doing a spoiler free review on this soon. I love this book. Let's just put it as that. The Darkest Minds is set in this world where children randomly just start dying for no apparent reason. Children that live are left with these powers. They are sorted into colours. You are blue, green, yellow. Then you are deemed not undangerous, but you're not dangerous and you are able to live. If you are deemed orange or red, then you are deemed extremely dangerous and they want to get rid of you. This follows a girl named Ruby who's pretending to be a green since the colour thing came apparent, but she's in fact an orange. Very dangerous. Ends up at this camp pretending to be a 
was it a green or a blue? I think it was a green. I can't say, but I'm pretty sure it was a green. And because they are the least dangerous of all of the colours. Within this camp, he is then found out to be an orange. On the day that they found out she is an orange and they plan to kill her, she is broken out by one of the people who's working undercover with another thing. And it's a bit blur escaping and getting away from both the camp and the people that have helped her get out of the camp. Comes across these people and they're basically trying to find a league of kids who all have powers but they're all on different colour lengths. The idea is that the colours don't matter and everything's black and white and they fit in really well together and they're not separated. It's an amazing book. I'm not doing it any justice. I'm not doing any of these books any justice. It's an amazing book and I really 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 love it. Can't wait to read the next one. I have it coming. It's in the mail. As we speak, I really want to read it like right now. The movie as well. The movie was great. I'll talk more about that when I finally do a review of this versus the movie. The next book was Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge and this is a Beauty in the Beast retelling. It's about this girl named Nyx who has been brought up her entire life told that she's gonna marry this beast whose name is Ignifex. I'm not saying that right. She has to kill him to avenge her mother. That's what this is about. It's a very different take on the Beauty and the Beast. Where she actually is brought up to kill this beast. She knows he's a thing and she knows she's gonna be sent off to go and live with him basically and she's not very happy about it she doesn't want to do it and she feels used by her family and I'll be in the beast retelling they end up falling in love and it's actually really cute I enjoyed this quite a bit um not as much as I thought I would because I really do like Beauty and the Beast and I put my hopes high but it was good next book I read was New or Rising by Jennifer Wilson and this one for the green on the cover so obvious is another dystopian otherworldly book um, an alternate reality AR world and again I can't remember too much about what this is about because I read it so long ago and I've read so many books since then from what I do remember it's about a girl named Phoenix who is in this world where everything's gone to hell obviously it's a dystopian world she finds this little girl who she's determined to keep safe and alive and she doesn't entirely know why but she's determined to keep her safe and alive even though she is deemed dangerous Nix is not the little girl um, and everything stands in their way and that's all I can really remember about it I'm definitely going to have to reread this at some point but no I enjoyed it um, and I think I gave it like a four out of five stars but I can't remember too much about it which really actually does suck I did really enjoy this book but it is what it is yeah pretty sure I died at the end because she sacrifices herself in a way that's really weird not she doesn't die spoiler alert she doesn't die um but she sacrifices in a way at the end and I'm pretty sure I cried oh I know it's a good book but then again I cry at pretty much all the books I read so to make sure the camera was still recording and like start a new file because it does start recording at some point and I'm not sure which next book I read was Caraval by Stephanie Garber and this is a kind of circus book which is what I went in thinking but it's not actually what I thought it was. thing that travels around the world and they put on shows and yeah it's kind of like a circus. However it's more like a game where you enter and you can either be someone who watches or someone who plays. Play the game or watch the game if you're in the game which is what our main protagonist does. She I think her name was Scarlet or was it Teller? I think Teller was her sister and Scarlet was the protagonist. I mean, she goes into this game and she decides to play and the game is kind of really brutal and twisted and this kind of sets her against everything she's ever known. She meets all of these people and she can't really trust anybody. Really dark and twisted. It wasn't as good because I I had the night circus in mind and I know I shouldn't do that but I always 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 compare books that I think are similar. Probably shouldn't have done that but I did really enjoy this book. I think I gave it a 3.54 star out of 5. Someone Legendary has recently been released and I do want to get it. The cover by the way is absolutely stunning. Bright yellow inside and then it just it's absolutely stunning. Absolutely love it and I definitely want to pick up the next one um, to see what happens but I was intrigued going into this and I'm more intrigued coming out of it. I did like it, just didn't live up to my high expectations because I had the Night Circus in mind. For my birthday I got the Walking Dead Days Gone By comic. This is the first instalment out of like 50 or something. I got given this to me for my birthday by Lisa. I went home that same day or was it the next day? And I read it and it was a really quick and simple read obviously. It's a comic, it's going to be taxing. I read it in about 20 minutes and I loved it. The humour in it, the drawings in it, they're all hilarious. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what The Walking Dead is about by this point but it's a zombie story as you can probably see about this man named Rick who is a cop. He's the chief of police I think, chief inspector or whatever. Um, and he's shot one day on a mission and up a few months later from a coma. The world has gone to hell 
and a zombie apocalypse has broken out. He has no idea what's going on, where he is, what's happening, where his family is. And he's basically woken up in this world with no idea that like, zombies are even a thing. Soon we realise this though, pretty quickly. And the humour in this is actually really funny. This comment specifically is about him trying to find his wife and son whilst trying to avoid zombies. And yeah, The Walking Dead. Basically episode one and maybe two TV show. It was really good. I think I gave it a three star on Goodreads, but it's more like a 3.5. But again, I'm not a comic book person. I'm more of a book person, but I would definitely be picking up the rest. They weren't $15 each. It's £10 each for a comic. Ugh. £10 for a comic I'm going to spend 20 minutes reading or £7 for a book that I'm going to spend at least a week reading. Next, I read Scythe by Neil Shusterman. This is the first book in the Scythe Chronicles, I think it was called, series. It is what it is. I freaking loved this book. I predicted quite a lot of it and I knew a lot of it was coming. There were two main things I did not expect. One of them involves a character dying and another involves a character not dying. Doesn't make sense but it will if you've read it. I honestly loved, loved, loved. What? What? I loved this book so much. I even brought the second book before I'd finished this, knew I wanted to continue it. It follows two protagonists, Citra and Rowan, who are taken on as scythe apprentices. And a scythe is someone who controls death. This is set in a world where death isn't a thing and you can restart your life whenever you want. Say that you're like 60 years old and you want to be a 20 year old again, you can do that. Jump off a building and they'll fix you in the hospital the next day. The only time you can die and stay dead is if the scythe reaps you, which is basic. Scythes are basically death. You are a scythe and decide to end your life. You can't kill a scythe. Only a scythe can kill themselves. And other scythes can't kill other scythes. It's follows Citra and Rowan who are both taken on as junior apprentices. Because a scythe has never taken on two apprentices before, um, the rest of the scythes feel like they are biased and instead make it a game only one of them can become a scythe and when they do that they have to kill the other person and they're sent head to head and it is a very 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 emotional book I want everyone to be okay I know that's not gonna happen but I did love this book so much and I can't wait to read the next one like I'm saying that about every single book I'm picking up finished that book on the tram to work literally like at the beginning of my tram ride I had a few other books with me because I'd recently brought some so I decided to pick up username Evie as I knew I'd be able to finish it before I started work as again it's another graphic novel I didn't really know what this is about when I went into it so I was just kind of like okay I've heard a few things Ow. I heard a few things about it and I knew that it was supposedly really cute and it deals with a lot of type of shoes. It was, I guess, I gave it a three star-ish. It was less than what I gave the Walking Dead comic. About a girl named Evie whose father has cancer and he's built her this entire online world without her knowing and one day he dies. She goes onto her laptop, or if it, is it his laptop? I know, she, I don't know. She goes onto her laptop one day is this file like that basically is for her that Harvard has created and when she opens it she gets sucked into this world where everything is okay and peaceful and because Evie isn't a happy person she's really sad depressed and lonely and he built all this world so she could be happy and really cute until her cousin gets involved who is a snobby bitch but it was cute I did like it I just wish it was better but then again for a half an hour read what can you expect and I finally finished The Fates Divide by Veronica Ross you know this got put on hold because I lost it had to buy a new one. When I bought the new one and it finally arrived, the book Tubathon started. Then after the book Tubathon, I read a few other books and then I finally, finally, finally finished The Fates Divide. This is the sequel to Carve the Mark, so I can't really tell you what this is about. And Carve the Mark happened so long ago. I'll attempt to tell you what it's about, but we'll see where that goes. Follows our two main protagonists, Sarah and Ekos, are in this, it's kind of like a really sci-fi place. They're all on different planets and Sarah and Ekos are on like rival planets. Till one day Ekos is kidnapped and taken to Sarah's planet. And they all have these gifts. Sarah's is that anyone she touches she can hurt. Shatter me where you at. And she can't control it and she's constantly feeling the, this pain. They call it something but for the life of me I can't think of what they call it. But she has like this shadow going over her body. Because his power, of course, of course, is that he can turn anyone's power off. He can't be affected by people's powers. He has like, he is the void of powers basically. So he can touch her and her power will turn off. And she can touch him and she won't hurt him. So of course they fall in love. 
course they do. Thinking maybe there might be another one, but I've heard it's only a duology. Not sure because it, it does set itself up for another sequel. I don't feel like the pages have been turned. I don't feel like everything has been closed. I'm hoping that Veronica Roth is going to write another book. So this may be signed. The next book I read was Firelight by Sophie Jordan. This is one of these books that I've had on my shelf that I thought I really want to read it but I'm never going to get around to read it and you know what? Surprisingly I really really enjoyed it. So this book is about a girl named Jacinda who is a Drakai which is a dragon who can transform into a human. Not a human who can transform into a dragon but a dragon who can transform into a human. They are long line descendants from dragons and they have a tribe and there are dragon hunters. They will. How you doing, Will? And this is one of those books that has a love story in it. A doomed love story, of course. One day, Jacinda is flying around and with her friend, I think, and they get caught by dragon hunters. A scene and Jacinda helps her friend get away because her friend is a water drakai and goes under the water, whereas Jacinda is a fire drakai and she flies around to try and distract the hunters to keep them away from her. She dives off the end of a cliff as a dragon obviously because the hunters don't know they can become human. She goes into this cave and one of the hunters jumps into the water, swims over to the cave and sees her and lets her go. Then Jacinda's mum takes her away and takes her away from the clan and tries to repress her dragon in her into the desert which is where her dragon can't manifest that's what they call it because the air is too dry and she's used to the rainforest moisty air type environment and she's a desert to try and kill off her inner dragon but surprise will goes to her new human school of course he does and she's trying to keep the secret of her being a dragon from him even though he's the one keeping her dragon alive bum 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 long story short i loved this book and i really want to get the next one so i'm going to and i'm going to read it and i'm going to love it it just goes to show those books that you have on your bookshelf that you look at and you think I'm never going to read you but I want to read you, keep because when you read them you may end up loving them. This book I read was Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. This book was very predictable to say the least. I pretty much predicted every single thing that happened in this book other than one thing at the ending which I kind of ended up predicting anyway because I got a minor spoiler for it about the character doing something not about the actual spoiler and I was just kind of like okay I can see where this is going. I ended up predicting the entire book and I would like to say that I want to read the rest of the series because I am intrigued but I can kind of see where it's going and the fact that I've managed to predict this whole book means I can probably predict the entire series and do I really want to waste my time reading a series that I can predict? At the minute it's gonna be a no. It may end up being a yes because I am intrigued and I would like where it's going at the minute. It's not the one for me. At the same time, I do want to know what happens. It's so, uh, I'm so torn. I did enjoy this book, don't get me wrong. It wasn't the best. There's a lot of problematic things in it. It's nothing I haven't read before when it comes to royalty books, when it comes to dystopia books. Just nothing I haven't read before. It's kind of like just a mashup of loads of little things and made into its own world, which is unique, don't get me wrong. Like the world itself is unique. Everything that happens is kind of like, yeah, we've, we've read this before. Then the last book I read in August, finally, we are at the end, guys. I hope your tea got drunk and isn't cold. Tea. Reminder to drink your tea. More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera, and this is the last book of Adam Silvera's that was published that I have not yet read. He is coming out with a new one. It's co-written with Becky Abitali, which I'm very intrigued. Two of my favourite LGBT writers writing a book together. I'm very intrigued. But before I even get into what this book is about, I want to give a huge trigger warning for suicide and anxiety and depression. This book follows our main character Aaron whose dad has recently committed suicide and he's having to live with that fact. There is this thing set in place in the world at this point where you can have your memories altered and he is considering it every single day, so is his mum, to try and forget what his dad has done. None of them want to actually go through with it. Aaron has a girlfriend and a group of friends and for the most part he is more happy than not and he meets a boy and he starts developing feelings and realizing that he may not be as straight as he would like to. This is a Lateo Institute which help which you can use to erase memories, change memories and just get rid of parts of your life and as much as he wants to get rid of his dad he can't find himself to do it. Whenever he meets Thomas he starts questioning his sexuality, starts realising he may not be as straight as he wants to be. It happens and he wants to go under the Lateo treatment to forget that he's gay. Oh Aaron. <laughs> Thomas is straight 
Aaron kisses him, long story short, shit doesn't go down very well and he gets hurt and he wants to go under the thing and it's such a sweet story. I love Adam Silvera's writing stupid amounts and want him to write more. This was the first book he ever had published I believe and I loved it so 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 much. My favourite out of his works I don't think but I haven't read a book by him and not liked any. Adam Silvera man. Adam Silvera. That's it. Those are all the books that I read in August. This was a long video. My voice hurts from talking. Now I've got to edit this. I don't have the mental capacity to edit this, but that's fine. I'm gonna see how unsatisfying this pile is now that it's that. It's so unsatisfying, so unneeded. But anyway, that was my August wrap up and it was a big one. So if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed your tea and snacks if you had them. Subscribe if you haven't already. I post a new booktube video like this every Thursday and a new reading vlog every Monday. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next week. Bye. Let's crack in a pile of books at these half decent years.